And we're back for the third episode in one week after <laughs> being off for like two and a half years. Yeah, you know, uh, it's me, before, Jeremy. We uh, it would be like six months in between each one, and now we just can't get enough. Yeah, it says something too about the easiness of the 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 new podcasting tools and stuff like that. It makes it a lot easier to just jump on here, and you'll hear more and more enhancements as we record. But we're just going to do it, and we're going to do it as as easy as possible, and then eventually we're going to add more stuff as we go along, including those live reads, which I need to set up, I guess, of the ads. And that that leads us to our first ad break of the uh, the podcast here. We've already semi plugged it. Zencaster, great for your podcast. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I uh, definitely suggest it. Let's start. Um, I'm just going to kick this to you, Matt. I I didn't watch NXT, so tell me about it. What happened? Um, Ed showed up uh, in the middle of a confrontation between uh, Balor and Pete Dunne. Um, who will meet next week at takeover. Uh, I had the, the name of the takeover on the tip of my tongue and cannot for the life of me remember Wait, what it is. There's a takeover next week. Yeah, Takeovers next week, Pete Dunn versus Finn Balor for the NXT championship. Um, and while all signs on the internet are currently pointing to edge versus Roman, which is dumb. Um, Edge Edge came out and made a pretty good case for uh, for challenging. I assume it would be Balor if it's going to be on the WrestleMania card. Um, but it was it was a really entertaining segment and made me very that much more excited for him to challenge for the NXT title than uh, either of the two main roster belts. Well, that'd be cool. Anything yeah. else cool happen on on the show? Uh, thinking back to it. I watched it right before I watched Beach Break. So uh, I was was, all my mind has for wrestling from this week is uh, is the wedding, (laughs) the Orange Cassidy cake. (laughs) Um, I know there were Casey Catanzaro and her partner lost in the semifinals. uh, So they are they're out of the 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 women's Dusty Cup hunt. which I was a little bummed about. You know, she's come a very, very long way. She's become she's one of the more entertaining, um, entertaining roster members. Uh, MSK, uh, formerly the Rascals, um, are cha- they will face right. uh, Legado del Fantasma next week uh, before probably going on uh, to win the Dusty Cup. I'm not 100 percent sure since I think they've got to get through Champa and Timothy Thatcher, who just had a barn burner with Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Um, thus far on the year, probably one of the best damn matches I've seen. Um, but it's it's Champa, so you, you kind of expect that every time he's in the ring. I'm right. pretty sure that was the show. Yeah, Uh all right. Well, I mean, it sounds pretty good. So is the Dusty Cup culminating at this latest takeover? Yes. Yes. Both sides of the Dusty Cup will uh, will culminate at. Uh, that's bothering me that I can't can't think of what it's called. But yes, next week's takeover will have both the men's and women's Dusty Cup final matches. And that is next Sunday. Oh, that's cool. Well, but yeah, maybe I'll. Uh, next Sunday. All right. Valentine's Day. Yes. Saints Valentine's Day Massacre. It's like Vengeance yeah. Night or something. That was a... It was one of the... Valentine's Day Massacre was one of the few pay-per-views I paid for back in high school. With a Vince McMahon versus a Stone Cold cage match, which culminated in the... Uh, in Big Show making his debut in <laughs> WWE. Do you, do you remember that? I do. I do. Do you remember that happening? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did, that was always one of my favorites. Faintly. No, maybe I'll actually watch this thing. Yeah, no, it was a it was yeah. a, a really Since good I actually episode. signed up for I, Yeah. Well, I'm I'm all the way Well, to that the brings of us <laughs> The hell is this? That brings us to uh Beach Break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about Beach Break. Beach. 
beach break where uh we had let's just let's just start with a wedding and move on from there cuz uh cuz the wedding I don't I don't, I almost want I'm, I'm almost convinced that they're trying to do like okay what's all the ridiculous things that WWE does in one of these wedding segments let's do all of them and I almost feel like at one hand it was supposed to be kind of a weird jab at WWE but at the same time it just felt like a over the top version of what WWE already does. Yeah. They're like, we can do this too. If we want to, I did like all the, all the subtle jabs, uh, Miro kept making. I've, I've been involved in a lot of these (laughs) and like, he destroyed the gift (laughs) thinking somebody was in it. And he's like tearing everything up thinking somebody's going to jump out. I guess the one thing he didn't think to tear up actually had somebody in it. So it was, it was, it was, it was a wild uh, segment. I don't know why the, the villain from flash Gordon was officiating. Um, yes. I don't I, I, Is this guy a wrestler that I should know? I, I don't know who this guy is, but it, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Flash Gordon. Yeah. Great. And, at one point, terrible, Excalibur the said he's, he's got the eyebrows on point for the wedding this evening. And I thought that's exactly what he has. I don't know who the hell this guy is, but I will. that's the one thing I will remember when this episode ends. And yeah. look at that. It is. Uh, Elsa, was watching it. Elsa was watching it with me, and she was drifting in and out of sleep. Uh, and she remembers the whole uh, like weird dick joke attempt that they tried to make before they kind of just like moved on from it oh yeah where she started to say remember that yeah yeah and then he you don't have to tell everybody that yeah it's just like it was a complete train wreck but in all the the in all the best wwe ways i know like they shouldn't always be doing that, but it's it's pretty good. I don't think it was like TNA ter- or territory or anything like that, like a Vince Russo thing. But it's uh, it was if they don't do that every week, that would be good. But it was fun to see it, uh, their version of it as well. And I think it's just kind of a weird way of Miro to kind of be brought in with all this. So. So, yeah. Apparently, the, that crazy looking uh, efficient the, is an impact talent uh, named James Mitchell. Oh, so he is indeed a wrestler. So maybe I have seen him somehow. Jesus. Wow. So we've seen a lot of impacts back and forth in the last few weeks, including an increasingly unhinged Tony Khan. Um, but. Uh, this episode opened up the forbidden door, quote unquote, forbidden door, which is uh, apparently not, at least according to rumors, not just a one time deal just to get the get the title off of Mox, um, the US W I W G P US championship off of Mox. So I don't know, as a huge Okada mark, I'm uh, really happy about this because the idea that maybe I will see Okada in the U S cause it seems like their ring of honor deal is just gone now. Like, I don't, I, who knows what happened to it, but it seems like it's just completely evaporated and no one's acknowledged it. So I'm happy to see Okada again, maybe in the future. Um, and whatever they're doing with this bullet club thing, who knows, but it's the idea of all these companies working together is really the only way you're going to have like any chance of even making a dent in WWE. Yeah. Against um, them. It, it looks like they're, they're building towards some sort of uh, um, basically what WWE seemed to want a year or two ago. Um, hmm. OG bullet club. Uh, and now they yeah. can actually do like a stadium stampede type match with OG bullet club, you know, and switchblade and Tamatonga's bullet club which I I'm, I'm, I'm down yeah. for, uh, it, that could be a, a hell of a lot of fun to watch with, with, uh, AEW's production values. I, I think they could, they could just put on the most amazing, just outlandish match. It would be, it'd be incredible. Plus, and, I mean, and not Japan, saying that the pandemic is good. It's not good at all. Yeah. Yeah. New Japan's got, I mean, there's oh, just, I was just that, saying that like, yeah, there's a ton of that talent that you know you and I have seen on these these smaller uh, smaller shows, um, 
that it, it'd be it'd be nice to see, especially if they get back to you know open challenge for the the TNT title and stuff. You know, like uh, Brody Lee shows up, right? Um, and just th- there's there's tons of them that are that are over there now. That it'd be it'd be awesome to see them turn up and uh, and challenge for that belt. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I guess I just wonder what the whole state of Ring of Honor is in general, because I guess technically, like people like Brody Lee and and Bandito and Jeff Cobb are all Ring of Honor talents, but yeah, who knows what's with all what's happening? Like you, you almost kind of want to see them them do stuff, but at the same time, I know Ring of Honor hasn't been using these guys either. Uh, they've done a the pure that pure title tournament. But that hasn't there's mostly the smaller guys. So I don't think Brody Lee has been part of it. I don't think Jeff Cobb's been part of it. Um, Jeff Cobb went to Wrestle Kingdom this past year. So, yeah, I don't I don't even know what the state of some of these guys status is with with Ring of Honor. But I would love to see if they can make a de- deal with Ring of Honor. Why not? Let's just do it all. Because like if you could see um, uh, the party peacock, I forget his name right now. Why am I forgetting his name? Oh, what the hell? Damn. You know what I'm talking about, though, I right? Do. I've and got people his listening, you you probably know who I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But if they can, if they can have him, Dalton like Castle. show up to the to, to Dalton Castle. Yeah, I mean, I would. I think a match between him and and the current TNT champion Darby Allen would be great. Like, I think he would be great. I mean, and I've seen some some matches with Dalton Castle and some bigger guys too, like. If the, if end up like Lance Archer ended up with that TNT championship again, no, no, Brody Lee had it. Lance didn't didn't get it. Um, if if that were to happen, like that would be a great match too. Because like I've seen some matches with Dalton Castle taking on the bigger guys, and that would be amazing. So yeah, they've got a ton of talent yeah. at this point. I'm I'm curious if if it's just become a um, kind of a a, a line in the sand from broadcasting network perspectives. I don't know if, I don't know if maybe Sinclair is, is kind of keeping it from happening um, on a larger scale uh, since they can't, they can't get the, I just the don't understand of, what Sinclair even wants. I don't either. I mean, yeah. they, they own what a, a hundred thousand television stations and still can't get a damn TV deal to put their, their wrestling on at something other than two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I saw the New Japan deal is just with Roku. Uh, they're they're gonna do yeah. New Japan shows on the Roku channel, which I had to go into my Roku TV and see what the hell that meant because uh, I, I didn't know that existed until I saw that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I it's got to be something something with with Sinclair that's keeping that from happening. Um, but I mean, at this point. Um, you know, uh, you got Impact, uh, all the Impact TNA, whatever the whatever they're calling themselves this week, um, talent. Um, now you got the, the the doors open with New Japan. Um, I mean, what else is there other than Ring of Honor? To, to bring in some of the TNA guys. I could, as I could, far as a major, I'd, I'd yeah, be, major I'd be American on board companies. for like Cody versus Nick Aldis. That that'd be a, a damn hell of a match. Um, and there's 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 a lot of possibilities, and the, you know, I it'd be nice if Vince wasn't a stubborn bastard, and he could he could see the the potential that this had, you know, a long time ago, because um, then you know he wouldn't. Well, he wouldn't at the same time, on he, the edge of losing it. Yeah, I mean, he was the one that essentially took down the territory system, which was good and bad for I think for a lot of wrestlers it probably was pretty bad because it was a cartel. It was straight up a cartel. Like there's no way of saying it wasn't. Um, so him ending that whole cartel status was probably a good thing. But at the same time, like a territory system like this, like it keeps it super fresh. Cause you can just like when someone's getting stale, someone's getting old, then you just move them to the next brand. And Vince even kind of has the possibility of that if if they were a little bit more flexible with like guys moving between guys and gals moving between NXT, SmackDown and Raw a little bit to some degree. But that doesn't really happen in a way that makes sense. So 
I, I don't know. I think this is there's a a huge possibility here because because you can have these guys stay on mostly their things and then they just meet every now and then and that'd be great. So. So I don't know. I'm excited about it, but uh, not to be overshadowed by anything, but that uh, it is really hard to do with that wedding and all that. But the Thunder Rosa Britt Baker match, those two. I mean, there's very few people Thunder Rosa doesn't have chemistry with on that roster, but Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, I could see that a few more times. But, but yeah, yeah. I mean that that was awesome. Um, it really it, and I think I texted you the other day and said that that you know with with all the chaos that happened on that card, uh, it it sort of disappeared into it. But I mean that match was fantastic. Um, so yeah, they they killed it. That women's tournament could potentially be just some of the best wrestling um, in a very very long time. So that I'm very much looking forward to that. And I know AW has been hurt by the fact that just a very limited amount of women that they had available just with the pandemic and, and all that. But it seemed seeming things uh, starting to turn around. And then they've got that whole kind of deal with the tournament happening in Japan and America. So I'm interested to see how they handle that and how they bring, you know, the winner of the Japanese side over. I mean, I'm sure they're just going to have to quarantine for two weeks or something like that. But, you know, that'll be cool. Yeah, no, I, so. I got to give them credit with they they catch a lot of shit about, you know, the women not getting enough TV time. And, you know, even Kenny Omega said, you, I mean, we've got a, an overstocked roster. We've got to get everybody on TV. Um, but even even when they're I, I, I mean, let's 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 call it what it is. Britt Baker was was like their This is this is our you know, this is going to be our star. Um, and then she, she goes down with the nose injury and she made it work for herself, like doing the, the the talk show, sitting in the golf cart and sending messages up to Tony Schiavone. Uh, I mean, (laughs) she made it work for her and it, she built this whole, you know, shit heel character while she was injured. It was awesome. Um, so I'm I'm glad they they found, even if they, they weren't getting a ton of in ring time, they found little ways to like get that character going even while she was hurt, which was cool. Yeah. And she can obviously go, um, that Um, that Thunder Rosa match was, was definitely a, uh, a testament to that. Right. And I mean, I'm glad Thunder Rosa sticking around because I think she's really uh, a valuable player to, to have in the, in that division, uh, kind of going forward for sure. So, um, what what else happened this week? Anything else happen? Uh, How long do you think Edge is going to uh, tease out this uh, this this pick? I, I think at least one more week. I I honestly don't know I, at this the way it seems like they book things now. Like everything for WrestleMania is in pencil. Um, yeah, and I I truly think that they're stringing it out in hopes that they can get some of those uh, like dream scenarios that, that Vince has concocted. Um, there's, there's no, there's no realm that exists like it in all of the alternate universes, even the ones that don't have a pandemic, right. there's no way the rock can do it this year. Like there's, there's literally no way. Yeah. Um, but I think they're holding out hope that they could get him. Um, even though the insurance is never going to let him do that with 942 contracted deals to to do movies over the next somehow he's going to get them all done in six months because he's got another 900 right behind it um but i i I truly they they may he may not announce who he's going to face until when's wrestlemania is the second weekend in april it it could potentially be the last week of march before we we actually have clarity on this card (laughs) The only thing I know for certain it's is like 10 minutes Andre before the, the show Giant, starts. Andre, the giant Memorial battle Royal will happen as the only thing set in stone. <laughs> and I, I Carl Did Malone that last year? because of Shaq going to AEW. So <laughs> I, I, unless Dennis Rodman is still, can he, can he still function physically? Uh, they got to do something. Probably not. Arquette will win. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. They'll sign David Arquette. Just because the uh, the documentary's gotten so many views on Hulu, <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I do recommend that if you haven't watched it. It's good. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. For, uh, that's our second plug of the day. You Cannot Kill David Arquette, now on Hulu. You Hulu, can see my, ne- you you can can see my knees in the video. Pod. He lands in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Is it like the that hour was a crazy and, night? Is it like the hour and ten minute mark? Because I fast forwarded to it to, to show Daisy. Um, and I was like, Those, that, "That's my pants." <laughs> he landed in my lap. <laughs> but yes, it's it's an incredible incredible oh, journey um, from being just the 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 laughing stock of the wrestling community who was handed a title for inexplicable reasons due to a movie that didn't make any money and not a whole lot of people like went out and saw it. So I don't know how they thought that was promotional, but uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, he almost died in front of us. uh, And Luke Perry is in it. Yeah. Uh, I I guess technically his last starring role, um, even though he kind of like blocks his face a lot, but uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, and I, I do very much. There's a scene in there where um, RJ City and David Arquette, and I, I forget who else, but they're putting together a match, and that that scene as well is is pretty good, pretty good to watch. Some like real pros, kind of just like, okay, this is how a match is made, and kind of see all that come together, uh, which is really interesting to watch. But uh, yeah, give that a watch. Um, what else are we doing? I'm uh, I I tried Wrestling Empire on the Switch. It's a complete weird garbage game. Uh, but it's also kind of weirdly fun. I don't know. Give it a shot. Let us know. And uh, we'll we'll catch up with you guys uh, next time. Whenever next time is, who knows? Maybe we'll do a probably a post takeover thing. I'll watch takeover. Yeah, it, it sounds, should be. A, it good. should be a good one. I, I think it's going to end up being the Rascals and uh, Champa and Thatcher, which which could be a just absolutely incredible match. Um, Balor, Pete. Dunn. I, I'm surprised these guys. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised uh, the the former rascals like they've gone so far so fast with with all this because I mean I mean they were on top in L.A. they were um, for over a year they were the the champions um, or maybe like two years at, in pro wrestling gorilla and stuff like that and they would also show up in some other other stuff I I would go to and they put on incredible matches against the young bucks versus the um, uh, versus the Lucha Bros and 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 a bunch of other like incredible talents, and they just held their own and just killed it every single time. And that's that's uh, it's it's really cool to see them go so far so fast um, on the on on NXT. And and if they do end up on the main roster, hopefully they don't just get lost in the nothingness of main roster uh, WWE tag teams. So. But we'll uh, we'll kind of close off here, and and uh, we'll, we'll we'll catch you on the end of of takeover. But before we go, I'm a friend of Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. His patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and holds that support all night long to take the pressure off your shoulders, keep your neck aligned, so you get the best night's sleep of your life. See, Mike Lindell, I. I can plug this thing. Let's do it. You got me a check. I'll give you my Twitter feed and I'll talk about your fucking pillow until until I can't talk anymore. I found that script <laughs> on Google in like 15 seconds. We can do wow. this. We can make this work. Give me money. Well, if anyone else wants to give us uh, ad revenue, we'll we'll take that too. Yeah. <laughs> see, see you next week. <laughs>